Hi, my name is Joseph Ally. Welcome to my channel. And today I want to talk about the fundamental background of Neville Goddard's teachings of manifestation, awareness, and time and space, and how you can manifest anything that you want, given you understand a few basic fundamental principles of manifesting. This is a hot topic and it's come to my attention mainly through my clients and comments how there is a massive misinterpretation or misunderstanding of the concept of time as it relates to manifesting or essentially manifesting that works and with Neville Goddard specifically who has an extremely accurate set of teachings it becomes critically important to understand the fundamentals of what he's talking about and how to manifest whatever you want. That's the key to all of this. Despite nuances, the important um, aspects that drew me to do what I do now, which is teach manifesting, is simply because for a very long time when my life depended upon manifestation in order to simply live. Um, there were many misinterpretations or teachings which ultimately led me spinning my wheels. And it wasn't until I'm testing tens of thousands of recording manifestations, trial, error, trying to manipulate time, trying to manipulate space, trying to manipulate beliefs, and Ultimately, simply just myself, I came upon really some excellent um, resources and mystical experiences that ultimately led me to the true understanding, which now I can rely upon manifesting. And so if you follow along with this, you will find it extremely practical, understandable, and you will have no doubt within your mind that you are doing the right thing when you are attempting to manifest your desires. So before we begin, please hit the like button. It does something to the YouTube algorithm so that those who wouldn't normally be able to see this will be able to see it. On my channel, I release systematic, methodically tested manifestation techniques that work in a predictable, laser-focused way. So if you're interested in that, every Tuesday and Friday, I release videos at 10 p.m. London time, which teaches you how to implement these yourself. And all of these are data-driven through over a decade of systematic testing and tracking, trial and error of not only um, Neville Goddard's, but also the breadth of many, many different manifestation teachers. So, but aside from that, let's talk about manifesting. Let's talk about Neville Goddard. If you are an individual who follows along and is creating your reality and you have been um, experimenting, testing, proving to yourself that you can manifest, then you've no doubt heard the fact that your imagination creates your reality. Now, in a vast array of Neville Goddard's teachings, he equates the word imagination with God, and he says to you that you are God. Now, this is a fact. You are the God of Scripture, as he says. And in Scripture, in Exodus 3, it says that God's name is I Am. And that means your awareness, the awareness of being, your essence of self is God. Now, one of the um, fundamental misunderstandings of beginners when they get into Neville Goddard's teachings is the confusion and the thought that your self is God or that you are God means that your body or your mind or your concept of self is God. Now, even myself for years, I had implemented exactly what Neville Goddard said. However, with the incorrect presupposition that I and myself are the only God of this entire reality. And with that said, I therefore can modify and create the reality exactly as I desire. No questions asked. 
and for years having devised tests. Now, I, until this point, had considered myself a very successful manifester. I had manifested myself out of an incurable disease. I manifested myself out of an impoverished situation, out of homelessness, out of in trouble, out of getting arrested, going to jail continuously. I was in a position where the um, you know, psychologists, psychiatrists, medical boards all said that I was completely, essentially screwed. There was nothing I can do about it. But having had a taste with manifesting and not willing to give up, I then took it upon myself to figure out what I could do to make manifesting work for me in a practical way, in a way that doesn't require hope or crossing my fingers. And for those individuals who have been following me all along, you have already put this stuff to the test and confirmed that it is legitimate. But when I came to certain aspects and elements of manifestation, certain things were extremely easy for me, such as changing beliefs, such as manifesting things, manifesting um, healing of sicknesses, of subconscious blueprints of manifesting people, manifesting essentially anything. The, um, I had developed certain patterns, observed them through my own practical experiences that I had been locking and tracking all along. But also then once I became a YouTuber and then began coaching, I also tracked down not only my manifestation experiences, but also those of my coaching clients and those of the people commenting on my videos. And then even those reported to me through others. And there are many common denominators. And one of the problems that I had continuously encountered was considering I had already proven that which attributes were attributed to God, I also had those same powers and so do you. However, the concepts of time and space did not seem to be applicable. And it wasn't until I discovered that the mind is not the same thing as awareness and that God is not the same thing as Joseph Ally, or in this case, yourself. And also that there is not my reality standalone, Joseph Ally's reality, but there is one reality with 7 billion experiences or 7 billion minds that everything began to click. Now, it says in scripture that um, we were chosen in him before the foundations of the earth, which means that before our existence here, there is an awareness elsewhere or an awareness not aware of being myself. That was one of the first interesting concepts that began to crack this idea that this was only my reality and that um, it, that, that was essentially the beginning. And with that, realizing then or taking it further, Neville has a great lecture and he talks about God falling asleep on a, on a golden couch and waking up as the individual. Now, this is an analogy for the process that infinite God or infinite consciousness has to undergo in order to become me, in order to become you. Now, there is, as I said, I mean, it says this in scripture, Neville Goddard says this, and you can experience this also, that there is only one God, because if there were not, then God could not be infinite, could not be all powerful could not be ever present and in fact that would essentially prove that if each of us were our own god then each of us would be limited now but how then could it be said that all things are possible if i'm then saying that there are certain things that each of us share limitations thereof well, I want to break down to you this concept of an infinite God, infinite consciousness, infinite awareness, this falling asleep on a couch and becoming aware of you in a way that's understandable. Now, you've heard the statement before that 
all things exist now. That is an absolute fact. And that is something associated with manifesting, something we can draw upon when we imagine in order to construct our reality in a way where we can get whatever we want. Now, the thing is, is if everything exists now, that's not talking about here on this realm. Now, if everything existed now, then that would mean there would be no... Um, no time essentially to achieve certain things, to go from the beginning of this video to the end of this video. That would mean that all frames existed simultaneously and you would be experiencing them simultaneously. And it would also mean you are simultaneously a millionaire right now in your experience that you can perceive as well as a poor person or what have you. Now, you know that that's not your experience. And it's very important. Again, one of the most common beginning beginner fundamental errors of manifesting and this understanding of that you are God is the thought that these phrases such as all things exist now, or we're all one, or time does not exist, or space does not exist, that these should be some supernatural understanding of reality or it takes some sort of sage or mystic to be able to perceive such a thing. And in fact, most people recite these without really understanding that you, and even yourself, and even myself at the time, with, without actually realizing that this is something that can be experienced. Now, all things, so, so we take back this concept that all things exist now, right? This is how we manifest, this is where, where we derive from. Now, why do we have to imagine in order to get what we want? Now, when we imagine, it's not just some activity of a brain, but it is actually us entering into that dimension of timelessness and spacelessness and being able to experience anything at the moment and selecting that thing, certain things happen and then we eventually manifest that thing. So in other words, all things exist now and at once somewhere else. And that somewhere else is within eternity in time, in, outside of time space, outside of physical experience. Now that is God. God is all powerful. All things exist within him. He can do everything, knows everything. Everything exists now. But like I said, that's not our experience right now. And the reason for that is in order to experience at all, you have to go back to the first aspect of what we talked about, which was that God became us. This does not start with us. Not when we were born did reality get created. No, this already existed in totality. All things existed before this human experience. However, in order to experience anything, that would imply that there is the experienced and the experiencer, or the perceived and the perceiver. And for that to happen, that would no longer be possible within the framework that God is infinite, that there's only one God. So what happened is God abandons himself, his infiniteness, temporarily, to take on perception and senses. And once you add perception and senses, or perception and thought you then inherently add time and space. Now, how do we break that down? Now, the fallacy is that time is a belief and space is a belief. But this is not true, not at all, not through our experience. If all things existed together and as one, then there's no way to perceive oneself because that would imply space, which then implies that it's not just one, that there are multiple now, that means in this realm, we are not the infinite God manifested. What we are is, it's essentially a facet of God that stuck, the, the infinite God that stuck on a VR headset where you can suddenly perceive and think. So by adding thought, you add time. And why is that so? Now, time is not, like I said, a clock on the wall. Time is the comparison between experiences. The moment an individual can think, 
time follows with it, meaning you cannot separate the two. It's not a belief. It's just the fact that if you think right now, think right now, you can compare. The comparison implies time. So it's not a belief. It's a construct of physical reality that God took on the limitation of time, as Neville Goddard says, the limitations of the flesh. And perception implies space. Now, the only meaning you can sense things means that there's distance, and distance implies space. So in other words, all things exist now in eternity. That's the true element, the true source of everything. That's the real. That's the absolute. There's nothing else to be done. It's all in, in existence now. But in order for God to experience he had to abandon his infiniteness, his eternalness, and take on the limits of the flesh, which is perception and thought. And in order, that is the only way we can experience. It separates, refracted through perception and thought, we now can experience a world. In other words, if you took all of the universe and everything that was ever going to happen and stretch it out, so that we can look down it and then condense it all into one dot. That is what God is inherently. That is who you truly are. But we cannot experience something that is all in one point. So it must then stick on the, the thoughts, stick on senses, and now it can unfold. Now the trick is, is God will never not be infinite. So we must, we had to have been given some ways or means to experience everything. Still, because all things exist. So in order to do that, we are given time, we are given space inherently, but we are given manifestation. And manifestation guarantees that anything that we think of or anything that has ever existed, if we call upon it, it will manifest. So this is the concepts that Neville Goddard speaks of. Confused, you know, whether you confuse the mind with consciousness or whether you confused your own mind with God or to think that you have your own reality, none of these could be true. In fact, it was only when I began looking through the lens of accurate non-dual teachings, which is what Neville is actually deriving uh, uh, his teachings from, that I began to have absolutely systematic manifestation uh, um, results continuously. And so in other words, what this means is time itself cannot be removed. If you do not want to experience time, then simply close your eyes and stop thinking. Then you're experiencing your manifestation. That is eternity. But if you wish to experience the infinite within the finite, and you wish to manifest from God to this finite, fictitious, separate self, that takes manifesting, and manifesting implies time and space. So the key here is to, I, I think the key to understanding this is to, once we realize that thinking from the point of view of the finite ego mind and confusing it with God, we will forever be confused. We must then instead think from the perception of God. God, however, does not just take on the limitation of this mind. He takes on the limitation of every single mind, seven billion minds. Now, interestingly enough, however, the same way as when we look at a television, we do not see seven billion pixels. We see one moving image. In that same likeness, does God also see the inside of himself as one coherent image and that is the reason he has taken on the limitation of, of our flesh in order that he can experience the inside of himself. So what does this all mean? What this means is, is that you have the power to receive anything in this world. That is an absolute fact. Once, if you're still on the path to attempt to exhaust the potential of removing beliefs that dictate time, and once you get to this point you will realize that time always takes place in the shortest direction that it must. And likewise with space. 
In fact, what I have tested over time is the fastest way to manifest anything is to simply take on a simple imaginal act. And not only that, assuming the wish fulfilled from the point of view without complex scenes and working on beliefs as it relates to your assumptions of reality. Now, assumptions, again, do not include time nor space. Remember, if you want timelessness or spacelessness, you cannot be in the human experience. By definition, that's in eternity. That's in the infinite, which cannot be experienced, as I went over before. The key here is to be aware that your true self, the God that is aware of you, not the opposite, right? You're not aware of being God. God is aware of you. You say, I am Joseph Ally. That I is God. Ask yourself, who is it that's aware of your experience? I am. It says in scripture, and that is my name throughout all generations. You will, by definition of who you are, which is infinite, that's your true self, you must hold the image of the desire that you wish to experience within your imagination until it saturates your mind. And the mind, which is illuminated by awareness, which is God, by definition will render within time space. It will move and manipulate and change and commandeer pieces and people and events and animals. Whether commandeer those aspects and elements of itself in order to bring forth the rest of eternity to be able to be experienced by himself. So in other words, there's nothing too difficult. In fact, you are here to manifest. There's nothing you can do but manifest. There's nothing difficult. The only thing you have to do is imagine the end. Your picturing of the desire that you want, as if you already have it, gives a blueprint to awareness or consciousness or the true self, who then conforms the world, makes the world, it orchestrates the world, so it must take on the form of the thing that you've imagined. And in that case, it still might take a day, a week, a month, what have you, but it is guaranteed. There is no force. You do not have to use force and struggle from the ego mind. That is what I used to think when I thought I was God. My my body and my mind was God. Realizing, however, that my inherent self, which is awareness, is God. All I have to do is hold an image up to God and I will manifest whatever I want. And I have done that time and time again. So whatever it is that you want, the key is to hold that image up in front of awareness, which is God. This is Neville Goddard's concept of manifesting. This is not only his concept, but this is tested time and time again. I have done tens of thousands of systematically written down, tracked, um, tested manifestation experiments. Some have uh, been successful, some have failed, but there are always common denominators. There are laws by which this is applicable through. And once we abandon the concept that we can speed up or slow down time or get rid of time and space and realize that that's simply a function of humanity, then we can relieve ourselves of that sort of debt that we take on to free ourselves of something that doesn't exist and simply go for the experience that we wish to have. So anyway, I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, please hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. If you like these broken down, you know, uh, step-by-step techniques and ideas, concepts of how to manifest in the strategically proven way, hit the bell icon and I will see you soon. Thank you so much.